Hi and welcome again to Tech It Out. Today we are doing a follow-up video on this, the Streetwise Car Cam. I was asked on the YouTube channel to do a more in-depth review regarding the menu system. Quick review then of the cam itself, 1080p car cam. On the front here you have a little infrared light, which I never use. On the bottom is a microphone on the top microphone the mount itself on the left hand side you have the on off switch micro sd slot menu button the opposite side the right hand side you have a usb port and a hdmi port and also this the av port which i assume is for plugging in a microphone but i'm not 100 percent sure on that there's nothing in the booklet to tell me what it is on the back here you have an indicator light to say when it's in record mode. You have the screen of course. OK button, up down buttons and this triangle with the exclamation mark is a mode button to switch it between camera, video and playback. And then finally you have this red P button which is a lock button. It actually locks the recording that you've made so it doesn't get overwritten as this actual car cam as many car cams it uses the sd card and when it's full it reuses it it overwrites the oldest file and it cuts up the files into certain sections so that each file as it gets to the oldest point is overwritten so that's the basic overview of the unit itself i'll just plug it in now normally when you switch the ignition on the cigarette lighter socket the power socket comes live and that's what switches the cam on the first thing you have to do then when you get into the system is to press the ok button that stops the recording because it automatically starts as soon as you switch on so you press the ok button then press the menu button now you have two settings here you have camera and you have system we're going to go into the system first. Now the way you do that is to press the menu button a second time and it takes you into the system. The spanner is highlighted. You then use the up-down buttons to go to the selection. First selection in date and time. This is a little bit of an awkward one because to get back out of it again you have to come all the way back through the menu. There's no way I found to get out of it just back into this menu. So to get into it, of course, you press OK. Then you set your date and your time and the way you want your month and day and year format to show. Now it says there to go back, press the menu button. But when you do that, it actually takes you back to the main screen. So you have to press OK again to stop recording. Press the menu button twice to get back in to the settings menu. A little bit awkward, but you get back into it quite easily. So that's the date and time. Auto power off, is, as it says, it turns the power off immediately, or you can actually, let's go back into that. By pressing OK, you can change it so that it switches off after one minute or three minutes of the ignition switching off and the cigarette lighter, the power socket becoming inactive. You can have it to Keep recording for a little while after you've left the car if you want to. I don't do that. I keep it on the off position. There is a little battery built in, but it's not very big and it doesn't last very long. And there are better uses for it. The next selection is the beep sound. Well, I keep these turned off all the time. The car number is registration number it doesn't read the registration of the cars that are shown on the screen it's your own so you can put that in for reference if you want to language is self-explanatory tv mode now in the uk we use the PAL system in the usa they use the ntsc system and in some other parts of the world they use it as well when it comes to frequency, the difference between PAL and NTSC is that PAL is working on 50 Hz, 
NTSC is working on 60 hertz. So you'd expect me to use the 50 hertz choice on here, but I don't. I use the 60 hertz because all these files I'm going to be playing back on the PC, and the 60 hertz rate gives a much better, clearer image. So I keep that to 60 hertz because it's a clearer image of what the camera is recording. G sensor. Now, if you leave the car and you switch off, and as I said, there's a built-in battery in this. It doesn't hold very much power, but it holds a little. This, if the car is hit, will immediately switch the camera on and record what is happening. The other thing it does is if the car is hit or if there's a, a, a collision, it will lock the video section that was being recorded when that collision happened, when that sensor was activated. So you'd expect me to keep this switched on, but I keep it switched off because I've discovered on this particular cam, if you have it on, it's very, very sensitive. If you are driving along and hit a little bump, it will activate it and locks the video. Now the result of this is that the video recordings pile up and they fill the card and eventually it stops recording it becomes basically useless because it's not recording anymore. You have to reformat the card and restart again. So I keep this turned off. The thing is about this, of course, if there is an accident, then all you have to do is press this little P button and it locks it anyway. You don't need it to do it automatically. And as I've got a 64 gigabyte card in here, there's something like 80 hours of recording. It's, well, pointless to have it locking the recording when you can do it manually. It's not going to overwrite in the time. So if we go back, oh, the screen's gone off. So you can have high, medium or low. If you do decide to have it on, use the low. Come back out again there. So we'll go back in. Again, press it twice, you go back in. Date, time, power, beep, car number, language, TV mode and frequency, and the G sensor. The last part is the LCD brightness, which is the brightness of this screen. Monitoring refers to whether you want the screen on or off when you're driving. In the UK, you're not allowed to have the screen on, so you have to have it switched off, and that is the same in many parts of the world. Lamp setting controls that little infrared lamp at the front, whether you want to use it or not. I don't use it because I don't think there's any particular use for it. The camera is very sensitive anyway. Format, of course, that's straightforward. You format your SD card, and I recommend doing that at least once a month and definitely do it the first time you put it in. That returns it to default settings, and the last one is the version of the software. Now if we go back out, and return to the settings, we come to this, the actual camera mode settings. The first one is resolution. I always keep this on the highest. I don't see any point in having a lower resolution, although if you've got a smaller SD card, you may want to have it on a lower resolution. The next is loop recording, which means basically it keeps recording over and over on the SD card. It cuts it up into smaller chunks, five minute chunks I've chosen. In the case that the card fills up, it will delete the oldest chunk first. So every five minute chunk that is the oldest chunk will be overwritten. The next is the exposure. Well, exposure, if you're in a, a darker area, you may want to increase the exposure to get a better image. Or if indeed you're in a, a much brighter area, you may want to decrease it to get a better image and not have it overexposed. I have no need for that here. Motion detection detects whether the car is in motion or not and switches the camera on and off. 
the record audio button is either on or off. I don't see any need for recording the audio in the car, so I keep it off. And the date stamp keeps the date on the screen on the actual recording. I have that on so that if anything happens, then of course the date is recorded as well. The next set of settings you get to by pressing the far right button, the triangle with the exclamation mark. That takes you into still camera mode. Now you may not want to use the still camera, but it's there if you need it in an emergency. You again press the settings button and you get into the menu for that. You have the capture mode, single or timed. Put on single, there's no point in having it on timed. Resolution, I keep it on the highest resolution. Better image quality is always better. Sequence, if you want to do a sequence of timed shots, you can either have that on or off. I don't need it, so I keep it off. Quality, I keep on the highest setting. Sharpness, I keep to default, along with white balance, color, and ISO, so the camera actually works out the best settings. Exposure, exactly the same on default. Anti-shaking I have on. Quick review I have kept off. There's no point in seeing the image on the screen every time you take a shot. You can have it at two seconds or five seconds. Date stamp on the photograph you take. I have that on. And we're back to capture mode again. Now the final set of settings are the playback settings. You get to by pressing that button once more. Press the menu settings button. And then you have the final set of uh, menus, which gives you a delete for deleting the images or the videos you've taken. Protect, which does the same as the red button in protecting the images or videos that you have already taken. You can have a slideshow of them on this screen or indeed via the HDMI out. You can delete them, protect them, or slideshow. And that's the menu. It's very straightforward when you get used to it. It does have a few quirks, but in the end, it's, it's quite a simple little menu. Well, I hope this has answered the question, and I hope it is of some use to some of you. Thank you for watching.